Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I know it's a voiceover, right? But it's not going to be for long. At this point, I was just thanking Tommy for last week. Thank you so much. Thank you, new people anyone who's new here, everyone who's been here, been here. Thank you so much. Um, so this tutorial or video is a bit different. I was really scared about doing this amazing, amazing story of this person. Um, but you know what I thought it's fine. Let's, um, you know, braid my hair while I do it. Hopefully you guys get distracted enough <laughs> not to see the blunders, but, um, yeah, I hope you really enjoy, um, this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to now at this point. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this time I was just like bragging on my cream and the oils and everything. And it was a mess. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing. I was, yeah, it was in the middle of the night, but we move, right? Nigerian excellence. Let's go. Said I was going to be here every week. Every week. Thank you so much for watching. And I, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Mwah. Okay, so, I split that a little bit. Oh, no, 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 this ain't gonna work. I'll do this. Not going to work. Okay, I just need to tell the story. Fumiayo <laughs> ran from Kriti, okay? Born in Fumiayo. Um, duh. <laughs> she was born on the 25th of October. So she was born as Frances Abigail Thomas um, Fumilai Olua Fumilai um, in the throes of the colonial period in um, 1900, the 25th of October 1900. Um, and yeah, she was born to Mr. and Mrs. Thomas, and they absolutely were incredible incredible parents i'll tell you why in a minute so her granddad actually was an um former enslaved um person who was taken from the same abe okuta to sierra leone rescued taken to sierra leone then he eventually went back to settle in nigeria um and he was she had close ties to people who, were, who had experienced slavery you know so she was very um just uh, very aware in the beginning especially since the british were really already settled in anything going on where girls were not allowed to be educated it was frowned upon but the amazing thing was that she had amazing parents like i said and they really encouraged gr her, their girl to go to school and she was enrolled in 1914 in abel kuta grammar school as the first girl to like be in that school and this was like six years after the school was actually open so the boys were chilling you know having the, all their education and everything but you know they had a head start but um she definitely did not necessarily need that or else we would not be talking about her today because she's amazing <laughs> I love her so much. And after school in Abel Kuta, she left for England and she she actually studied in Cheshire. Is it Cheshire? Yeah. Um, and she really faced a lot of racism, you know, and it was really bad. I'm about to say so much so, so much so that she came back home and she was like, yo, Francis Abigail, indeed bean. She threw that name in the bin and she became Olua Fumilayo okay and it means god gives god god has given me joy come on and when she got back home she started to teach in the same school that she had gone to um and then she set up the abe okuta women's club club which they would she would come in and she would educate women and girls and, and then shortly after she fell in love with uh, mr oludo to israel um Yes, Ransom Kuti. They both really shared this interest for educating people and helping people. Like, he, he actually was one of the founders of, like, the Nigerian Teachers Union and just, like, really, really, really um, passionate about educating Nigerians and people. So they fell in love and they got married. Ah! So she became Oluwafu Mi, like, oh, Ransom Kuti. Um, the chiefs were really, really taking the mickey were really annoying people and just being terrible to nigerians and obviously not being nice to the women and just taking their like about to start giving them taxes and everything and especially in abel kuta where um Fumilayo was based um she, there was a chief you know the alake of egbaland who it's, it especially wanted money from the women and he just wouldn't stop and he, they weren't really even allowed to work as such you know make a lot of money so with the little money they had he still wanted to take 
more from them and they weren't just even being like the, the money the way they would even collect the money from them was not like oh sorry darling will you like to give me some of that you know it was like they would literally be abused and insulted and assaulted for um to, to get their own art earned and of course the women desperate they desperately needed a change and there was a change maker among them actually they all were you know but definitely a leader in Fumilayo because she she started to think ah, what do i do you know and obviously she had started this club so she then quickly changed the name to abe okuta women's union and started to um educate people on their rights and um how to actually get involved in politics and then she made it so inclusive that whether you were educated or not or like you you know you were um working whatever like as long as you were female get in here boo let's unite you know <laughs> so anyway the abe okuta women's union was then birthed his chief you know in abe okuta he, he not only would steal the women's um stock in their market and take basically take the money for himself or take their uh, take the money that they actually make it collect it you know um from their own store but he would like you know just really insult them and do all these kind of stuff as i said so formula I was like basically appealed to him and tried to just say please we, like this is it right but he he just it was like nah, boo. <laughs> and he increased the taxes even more you're just a devil she refused to pay her taxes and she encouraged the other women to be like we're not paying sir you know <laughs> you see they arrested her took her to court and she she was like i'm not, i did not commit a crime and the women were really behind her and they supported her as well and um but she wouldn't let up and when she was released again they she was like i'm not paying my taxes because this is um unlawful the crazy thing about this taxation thing for the women and the girls was that girls as young as 15 you know had to basically pay the taxes and because they were considered marriageable age at that time and boys didn't have to pay um till they were 18 so it was like clearly um and, and girls at 15 i mean they what what money were they really making you know to be getting taxed and something that she always would say was be like no um, no taxation without representation so if, if you're not going to let us be represented in places of power why do you keep taking our money there's, there's a movie called october 1st it's amazing please check it out it's on netflix and um there's a scene with her there with Fumilayo kuti she really made men in power uncomfortable in, in 1943, she led this um, thing called the Great Weep, uh, where thousands, like thousands of women, literally marched to the um, this like uh, this chief's house, and they, you know, they were like, not only are we not going to pay tax anymore, but we need you to like get like lose your job immediately. So they wanted him out. Pumlayo definitely showed a lot of um, discipline, and you know, um, she literally gave this. Um, chief hell you know and he, he ran off <laughs> literally ran off and then he came back again um but they did not you know give up and they continued to fight for their rights eventually literally you know gave um give in to their demands and um but the the, the fight continued the, just a few of her um, accomplishments. She had one of the first preschools in the in in the whole of Nigeria. Also, the first woman in the entire Abel Kuta to drive a car, which was a pretty which is a pretty impressive feat. Meetings with the union, and she would have she, they would wear um, their traditional clothing. She was so pro her culture, Yoruba culture, and also felt no kind of way speaking her language boldly and when um uh, when the political party ncnc um invited because everybody started to really talk about independence around that time they invited her as the only woman to travel all the way to england to kind of you know talk about um ways in which they can make the country um progress and, and and in a lot of these meetings, not only was she like the only um, woman 
in the, the meeting she also would be vocal as well and would talk about women's issues and how women need to um, be treated better and uh, something that she really continued to um <laughs> i was about to speak my language tenuma which <laughs> she really used to tenuma <laughs> which she used to um how do i translate that um, something that she really used to always kind of um, insist on. There you go. She something that she always used to insist on was that you know before the British came to Nigeria, things were fine. Especially women and men were united; they were seen as equal. And once the British came in, it, it seemed like there was such a divide, and um, women were not be were not able to actually be in spaces of power. You know, um, so she really caused like an uproar with that claim, which is fact. In my opinion and hers and she's right she know what she talk about okay during that time during that time she went around the country talking to people she even traveled to china she traveled to the united states at one point she um her visa was refused and you know even her passport um taken away um because basically they thought she was spreading like dangerous ideas um to the fact that you know she wanted uh, women equality for women and everything and um it was yeah it, but she didn't care you know she was a bar so a massive part of nigeria actually gaining their independence was due to her speaking in spaces and um, negotiating with the british government um her just fighting for and i and i mean this wasn't something that was easy you know um, at that time, especially especially because she was so big on including her Yoruba culture and her heritage, you know, she was so bold in that, um, passed down to her children and her grandchildren and her entire um, legacy, to be honest. And it was so beautiful the way, um, especially at that time, and I keep saying that, but at that time where um, the British were so... In they, 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 were, they were really settled in Nigeria and they wanted nothing more than to bring in the Western culture and the English culture. But for her to be like, no, we had a culture before you people got here and that is not, that is non-negotiable, you know. Um, we are here to stay and you, you need to just pack your bags and go home. Don't even pack your bags because you didn't bring anything here, you know. But also worked very closely with um, um, Unamdi Az Azikwe, who later became the first ever um, president of Nigeria, you know, and they were both part of the NCDC trying to um, basically get independence for Nigeria, you know, she worked closely, but I I at the same time, she was always like, okay, independence, Nigeria, we but women coming along, you know, she inspired so many women around that time who then became activists as well. Um, who I will definitely be also talking about. I talked about Margaret Ekbo. Margaret Ekbo was so, so, so inspired by her as well. And if not for um, Mommy Kuti, they, they really wouldn't, she, she wouldn't have found that oomph, you know, to be like, oh, they're doing something. She started something in the, at the other side of the country. Why don't I, like, like I can also be inspired. And you know, Margaret Ekbo actually wrote a letter to her at that time, you know, um, and Fumilayo Kuti, carried her along and basically gave her so much strength to continue when things got really really hard around that time and for that we are so grateful thank you so much for believing in the possibility of one nigeria of an independent nigeria and taking back freedom and independence from the british government at the time so thank you so much um your sacrifices were not in vain. Eshe, 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 yawa, eshe, In 1978, they literally came into our home, her, uh, her son's home, and they invaded, invaded it and, um, you know, burned the house down. As a result, she went into a coma and she later died, you know. Um, so I feel like in honor of her memory, um, it's also good. It's also um, important to highlight that, you know, that yes, she did great things for the nation, but it wasn't like she was, and, and now of course she's celebrated, but it wasn't like she was um, appreciated 
you know even beyond like she wasn't appreciated the way she was meant to be appreciated really and if i'm being honest even to today you know um so and, and i know, know a lot of people know about her um but we need to do better you know um this is meant to be a happy video wasn't it um let's appreciate our nigerian women who are doing incredible things who have done incredible things who continue to stand in the gap um just to make other people better when they could have easily um taken a piece of the pie for themselves and walked away never and, and no one would be like oh come back you know but um yeah they stayed they protected us and for that we are internally grateful thank you thank you so much for watching um i probably should do the last break tonight shit or is it two more i can get two more out of this thank you thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen her we did it joe we did it we we did it <laughs>